It is Weather for Weather Geeks time. It is Wednesday evening, and it's about to turn really nice outside. In fact, it's a pleasant evening as of uh, a little after 7 o'clock on this Wednesday evening. Very nice uh, springtime evening unfolding, but we've got even better weather coming at the end of the week and into the upcoming weekend as well. Now, region-wide, today was the first completely dry day in the month of May. Nice to put up a goose egg today in the rain department, but for the month, officially at the Youngstown Warren Airport, 2.87 inches. That's over two inches above average. We're also over two inches above average, almost two and a half inches above average for the season meteorological spring since March the 1st. And for the year, since January the 1st, total precipitation, we're running a surplus of 1.6 inches, almost 15 inches worth of total precipitation since the beginning of the year. Now, 12 months ago, it was becoming kind of a different story across Ohio specifically. Uh, 2024 was characterized by several months in a row of moderate drought or worse in parts of the Buckeye State. And this kind of peaked mid to late summer and early fall with exceptional drought conditions, mostly in southeast Ohio. But you'll notice how the drought situation in Ohio specifically has improved quite a bit in recent months. In fact, uh, no areas are designated as having or as being abnormally dry or in a drought across the state of Ohio. And I would not expect as much real estate to have drought conditions in our region during the upcoming summer. This is the latest Climate Prediction Center forecast for summer 2025, June, July, and August, precipitation compared to the average. And, you know, I think it's a it's a real good bet to, that they're going to have a hot, dry summer in the Corn Belt, especially you know, from Illinois on west into Iowa, Minnesota, parts of the Dakotas, Nebraska, places like that. I don't think dry weather is as likely as you get a little bit closer to the Ohio Valley. From eastern Ohio all the way to the west coast, that doesn't mean it's going to be a super wet summer, but I don't think the summer will be very dry. And in the areas that did have exceptional drought conditions, mostly, again, southeast Ohio, Cambridge, Athens, Zanesville, places like that, I don't think they're going to have a repeat of that coming up this year. On this uh, seventh day of May 2025, not a lot going on across the country. You know, we're in prime severe weather season, of course, across the lower 48 states, and it's <clears throat> not that common to show a national radar and satellite in which there are no severe thunderstorm watches and no tornado watches out. Might be a slight uptick in severe weather uh, nationwide over the next couple of days. In the meantime, we're closing in on a um, sunset milestone coming up in a little less than a week. Our sunset this evening at 826. We'll have post 830 p.m. sunsets in less than a week. In fact, a week from today, we're at 833. Three weeks from today, 845, our latest sunset officially in Youngstown at 8.59 p.m. in June. Now, depending on your exact location, that can vary by a minute or two, but officially in Youngstown, 8.59 is our latest sunset coming up in about so, uh, seven weeks, coming up in the second half of June. All right, in the meantime, uh, we had fog this morning. It was widespread in some places. It wasn't quite as much of a problem in others. I think the fog will be patchier tomorrow morning, but it can still be out there here and there for a time as Thursday gets underway. Otherwise, in the weather map on Thursday, we have a cold front approaching from the north. Now, this front is fairly moisture-starved, but I could see where we get a quick 5 or 10 minute or 15 minute shower, or maybe just a sprinkle in a couple of spots before the afternoon is through. The most likely window is probably about 11 a.m. to 3 or 4 p.m., something like that. But if you have outdoor plans tomorrow, if you plan on getting that mow done tomorrow, if you have anything else going on outdoors tomorrow, at this point, I wouldn't plan on making too many adjustments with that low-end rain chance. Whether it rains in your community or not, everyone's going to be dry then, it looks like, from Friday through the weekend. Now, the weather pattern will still be kind of blocked up a little bit. This low-pressure system off the eastern seaboard will be going nowhere in a hurry, but it's far enough to the east that it won't be a problem for us. It'll be a rainy stretch in Baltimore and Philadelphia and New York City, up to Boston as well, even as nearby as, like, Altoona, Johnstown, State College. Uh, places like that. It'll be kind of damp into the first half of the upcoming weekend, but this far to the west, we're looking at sunshine and abundance for both days this upcoming weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Now, I know a lot of yards are still kind of wet. It's hard to mow when you have still some water, but the weather itself is certainly going to cooperate over the next handful of days. Again, we don't have any chance of precipitation in our official forecast for Thursday. Could there be a sprinkle or a shower? I can't rule that out. Um, but we're looking at lower 60s, a little on the cool side for the next couple of days. We're into the second week of May, and our average high is in the upper 60s at this time of the year. But we'll be 7 or 8 degrees shy of that both Thursday and Friday. But Friday will still be a delightful day with a good deal of sun. And uh, Friday night, 
I wouldn't be surprised if some of the colder nooks to start Saturday, around 7 a.m. Saturday, I wouldn't be surprised if some car thermometers out in the countryside, especially red 34 or 35 degrees, and that raises the possibility of some patchy frost. Otherwise, this weekend, absolutely beautiful. Wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. We're getting into that time of the year. We've got to talk about the UV index more and more. The sun is very strong now that we're into May. And with hardly any clouds in the sky, Friday through Sunday and into the first half of Monday, the UV index will be up there, 7 to 8. You can get a sunburn in less than half an hour when the UV index is getting up into those levels. The next uh, three months, uh, what we call meteorological summer. It's the three months of the year in which uh, the uh, sun is at its strongest, it is highest in the uh, sky. And a look at the uh, next 10 days temperature-wise, we're going to stay below the average for the next couple of days, right about an average by Saturday, above the average Sunday, se setting the stage for a pretty warm week next week. And I could see where a couple of these numbers are a little conservative. We might even you know, try to crack into the mid-80s for a couple of days, right around mid-month. But certainly we have a lot of 70s and possibly some 80s in our future, starting from Mother's Day and taking us into that uh, second and probably third week of the month of May. You know from our longer range outlooks earlier on this month that we are expecting May to come out in the wash as a warmer than average month. That's it for me on this Wednesday evening weather for Weather Geeks. Have a great rest of your night and I'll see you right back here on Thursday.